All right, so this was giant. I actually saw this all over Twitter. So this is the Arc browser having apparently at least, oh, I guess the title says it all, gaining access to anyone's browser without even visiting a website. Uh, and of course, Firebase was the cause. Let's go. So I've been on this blog a few times now. The amount of times Firebase has been the origin of the bug is an incredible number. We started at the homepage of Arc. Oh, when I first landed... Uh, Let's see, where I first landed when I first heard of it, I snatched a download and started analyzing. The first thing I realized was the ARC requires an account to use. Why do they require an account? If I'm not mistaken, Eva, if this was also you right here, Eva also broke into, uh, uh, what is it, MKHBMB, whatever his name is, Marcus something, 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 something. I think his name's something like Marcus. Whatever the guy is, the tech review guy, his a wallpaper app she also broke into and destroyed it. Introducing ARC's cloud features. So I boot up my MIT M proxy instance and sign up and see that they are using Firebase for authentication, but no other request. Are they really just using Firebase only for authentication? After poking around for a bit, I discovered that there was an ARC featured called called uh, easels. Easels are a whiteboard-like interface. Oh, that's nice. Easel. I get it. Yeah. And you can share them with people and they can view them on the web. When I clicked the share button, however, there was no request in my MIT M proxy instance. So what's happening here? Okay. That's weird. It's communicating obviously via the quantum net. If you don't know about the quantum net, you got two little photons wiggling together, sending messages. They're all they're all up in there. That's what happened. Just you got hit with the quantum level. Uh, hacking Objective-C based Firebase apps. By the way, this is the most, this is single-handedly the most cursed sentence I've ever read in my lifetime. Considering it contains both Objective-C and Firebase at the exact same time. From the previous experience hacking an iOS based app, I immediately had a hunch on what this was. Firestore. Firestore is a database as a backend service that allows for developers to not care about writing a backend and instead writing or write database security rules and make users directly access the database. This has, of course, sparked a lot of services having insecure or insufficient security rules. And since researching that, I would like to call myself a Firestore expert. OK, so let me just make sure I understand this. So Firestore effectively allows you to just ex raw dog execute squeal, but you have to set up like a series of rules. Oh, we did this. We, we already read this one. Yes, is that what it is? Is it, You literally just, you can just write any squeal you want. You just can just, rod, oh, you raw dog no squeal. And you just have to configure it. Bro, if there's one thing I know about developers, is that configuration has literally never worked for us to get it right. Like, never ever. If configuration works, then Webpack should have been a, just, a, just a home run. Raw squeal is great. Uh, is great. You def don't have any issues ever. Yeah. If defaults work, send it. <laughs> they do technically work. Defaults technically work. Okay, anyways, this is good. Okay, that's kind of wild. Firestore has a tendency uh, to not abide by system proxy settings in the Swift SDK for Firebase. So going off my hunch, I wrote a Frida script to dump the relev relevance calls. By the way, I don't know what a Frida script is. I, I've never actually heard that term. To be fair, I am. I'm in fact not a hacker. Document with path. Uh, Objective C classes uh, is a Frida script. Some sort of what is it? Frida balls. A Frida uh, Eva. Is this a Eva? I, I just assumed you're about to make a uh, Frida my balls in your mouth. Uh, free my balls in your mouth. Uh, query field. Okay, so you do a little querying. I I assume this must find some sort of finding here. Okay, get full path. Does a little full pathy path. Okay. We're going to log some queries. We're going to get some queries that we're logging out with the where clause and the field name and all that. Okay. It looks a lot like JavaScript. I mean, in fact, I'm having a hard time even telling the difference between it and JavaScript. But it must be some sort of objective C JavaScript. Am I getting that correct? It's just like JavaScript with objective C. Frida scripts are written in JS. Oh, okay, but they have access to... It must be just some sort of JS engine that has bindings to the objective C universe. When I read Objective-C and Firebase, and I thought this was the craziest sentence I've ever read, I now take that back, and I'm sorry to all, all of my viewers and my fans for me saying that I've just read the craziest sentence of my life, because now that I see that you can actually do JavaScript intersecting with Objective-C, I take back everything I've said, and it is, in fact, the craziest thing I've ever seen. <clears throat> now. Yeah, it has bindings. Yeah, no, I see that. Someone made a bridge. Because that's what we need. We need we we need bridges. All right, in, interceptor attached. Document with path implementation on enter parent. Okay, so you get a. 
I, I don't know what we, we can't, you know, I don't know a lot about the objective C thing. So we're just going to uh, kind of avoid it. But effectively, I assume when you do any of these methods, you must, you must be able to listen to those methods being executed. And then when they are executed, you are able to log out any queries that are being, ma uh, being made. Then you can format the nice data. I think that's pretty much what it is. And then it looks like you're also actually just ex straight up executing data. A bridge to hell. A bridge that leads nowhere. I write code like this for an iPad. Objective-C that runs logic inside the embedded web browser. Nice. You missed a line. Which line would be? Oh, hacky script, but it works. So I launched Arc with a script uh, loaded on startup, and this is what I got. Oh, okay. So this is what it outputs. Oh, nice. So it's okay. So that's everything that it's outputting is this little bad boy. Nice. User referrals, boosts, users. So it gives you users, preferences, all this stuff. Sick. So it looks like Arc st uh, stores some preferences in Firestore along with basic user object referrals and boosts. Okay. What the hell are Arc boosts? Arc boosts are a way for users to customize websites by blocking elements, changing fonts, colors, and even using their own custom J CSS and JS. Oh, nice. Okay. So this is how you'd like block shorts from YouTube. Okay. That makes sense. It's like, this is like the ultimate custom customizer, right? You, you no longer need an ad block. You can customize your own hand rolled. This is like the Nix of browsers. Is that what you're trying to tell me? You can customize to your your, your most favorite degree. Built-in tamper monkey. Let's go. Arc boosts, uh, boosts are a way for users to customize websites, blah, 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 blah. Do you see where this is going? So I manually log. I don't actually see where this is going. I assume they must store the stuff to execute, and then you get it to execute anywhere. That's where I'm confused on the bridge on how you get it to execute everywhere. So I manually logged into my account using my dummy page to test Firebase accounts and execute the exact same query to get my boosts. Okay, nice. You got your boosts. <laughs> Ain't nothing like permissions. Cool. Let me create a simple boost on Google.com. Oh, no. Is this going to be applied to everybody? Let's go. Hey, there's a boost. Let's try changing some parameters around it. I see that it queries uh, by creator ID. And we can't query different creator ID than the original. But what if we update our own boost to have another user's ID? Well, I tried it with another account of mine. And this... This way, the result of when I went to Google.com on the other computer, the victim one. Okay, nice, nice. But how do you get these users' ID? Because when I looked at the user ID, they look, they look like some sort of base 64 stuff, right? Creator ID. Okay. Okay, so this is not good. So if you just simply change the ID and you save it, hold on, let me get this straight. You save the where clause into Firestore so that it executes with the where clause. I'm just confused as how you were able to get it to save to somewhere else. You update the document to have another creator ID. But then how did that become visible here on this one? I guess that's, that's, that's the part that got a little bit confusing for me is you saved it on one account. Here, let me go like this. Don't look at any of these things, okay, please? This is way too small. So this is what I'm trying to figure out. So let, here, let me just explain where my head's going right now. Is that you have two sessions, right? You have your, you have your hacker and you have your victim. Your hacker saved a query that includes your victim ID. When your victim ID opened up Google, it got the experience, the boost that you made. Firestore is a database. Just simply updated the database entry to have another user's ID. Oh. And then when this user, unbeknownst to anything else, goes and access Google.com, it gets its boosts. And its boosts despite being created from, oh my gosh. So you can literally just update it to any creator ID? <laughs> that's crazy. That's honestly, that's like the craziest thing I've heard in a long time. So in other words, there is this, there is a Firestore up here. So this person stores this query with victim ID. So instead of my ID, I replace HID with victim ID. Then when this person requests their boosts, they actually get down the attack. Is that what we're saying? So you can just upload any person's ID you want, and they just are forcefully retrieving this ID. Okay, I can understand. Again, configuration is a horrifying thing. This is why there should just be endpoints. You call an endpoint. The endpoint goes, I will store your thing for you. Like this direct squeal in the DB, it just right in the browser just seems like a crazy thing. Like I'm, I'm actually having a really hard time understanding why this would ever be a, an item. Boost this. Yeah, let me help you. Deleted. Foo Force. Deleted. Get the hell out of here. Get wrecked. 
Foo Force, more like Foo bl- Crushed. <clears throat> All right. So this is pretty crazy, but I'm not. I'm still not seeing how crazy this is yet. Even though this is very crazy, because these IDs are obviously large, right? They look like they look like they're base 64 encoded, but I don't think they actually are, because usually base 64 encoding has some equal signs at the end. So I, I don't think it's that. By the way, was Cakes shouted out? Sorry, Cakes. I'm in the middle of trying to learn some some amazing stuff. If you're not following cake, Cakes, you're a loser. Okay, either both on YouTube or on Twitch. Don't be a loser. Flip, keep that in. Put some text up that says, you ain't following Cakes? What are you, a loser? What are you, a loser? <clears throat> um, all right, anyways. What the hell are Arc Boosts? Okay, we already did this. Okay, so we already talked about this. Okay, awesome. Yeah, what the fuck? It works? Yes, quick recap. Arc Boosts contain uh, arbitrary JavaScript. Arc Boosts are stored... Yeah, by the way, the, the containing arbitrary JavaScript is kind of crazy, right? That's kind of a crazy behavior to just say like, hey, well... Well, I mean, is it that crazy? JavaScript via database query. Okay, yeah. No matter how you say it, it sounds a little crazy. Arc boosts are stored, but though I kind of want to see where you could take this because that seems like you could you could write a pretty fun application. You know what I mean? Like you could potentially create a choose your own adventure game, and the adventures could be created by JavaScript stored in a database. I'm just saying. J Diesel 2.0. Yeah, exactly. Oh no, he's ADHD. I know my mind is running right now. The Arc browser gets which boost uh, to use via creator ID field. We can arbit- arbitrarily change the creator ID field to any user ID. Thus, if we were to find an easy way, or <laughs> thus, if we were to find a way to easily get someone else's user ID, we would have a full attack chain. Yes. So that's my question. Can you do this? And obviously, here we go. We can do it. Getting another user's ID. User referrals. When someone refers you to Arc, you get a referral. You get, uh, uh, or you refer someone to Arc. You automatically get their user ID in their user referrals table, which means you could just ask someone for their Arc invite code, and they will likely give it. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So if you can just get, if you can just do as much as you can, you can get a bunch of them. Okay. You can share. Uh, you can share Arc booths only if they don't have JS in them with other people. And Arc has a public site with boosts and boost snapshots. Publish boosts contain the user ID of the creator. Hold on, hold on, Eva. Does that mean you could go to the public site, you could go to those boosts, you could then take over the creator ID, and then could you start saving on behalf of that creator ID into their into their stuff? Is that even possible? User easels. Arc has a feature called easels, which are basically whiteboards. You can share easels, and this also allows uh, you to get someone's user ID. Putting it together. This would be the final attack chain. Obtain the user ID of the victim via one of the uh, mentioned methods. Yeah. Create a malicious boost with whatever payload you want on your account. Update the boost creator ID field to the targets. Whenever the victim visits the targeted website, they'll get compromised. The browser, uh, let's see, the browser company normally uh, does not uh, do bug bounties. Update, see that at the end of the post. But for this catastrophic of a vulnerability, they decided to award me 2,000 United States Federal Reserve notes. Let's go. Timeline for vulnerability. Got initial contact over signal encrypted with ARC co-founder uh, Hirsch. Vulnerability proof of concept executed on Hirsch's account. Added to Slack channel after details disclosed over encrypted format. Vulnerability patched out uh, bug bounty award. CVE assigned. Look at that. That's pretty fast. That's like 15 days right there. That's pretty good. RCE on privileged pages. While poking around, I saw that boosts actually execute for other protocols as well, even though you can't create them in the client. So someone could create a boost targeting the page settings, and it would execute on Chrome settings, which allows further escalation of privileges. Ooh. Let's see. Arbitrary, uh, d- yeah, arbitrary ex- uh, cross-site scripting anywhere else would be 100K. Yeah, I mean, this is full arbitrary cross-site scripting. To be fair, it doesn't seem complicated to fix. You know, most security bugs aren't actually all that comp- complicated to fix. Just to be completely real, the ones I've been around are all just like, you, you know, like this one. You just didn't configure it right. Or B... You just have to, like, change a property not to give yourself some sort of uh, DOS attack that, like, regex, regex expansion attacks. They're not, like, hard. Just check the end value. Yeah, that's, like, that's like 85% of all vulnerabilities here. And so it's fixing bugs are usually easy. It's the finding of said bugs that are very difficult. And so this is non-trivial. 
right? RC on privilege pages. Okay, uh, privacy concerns. While researching, I saw some data being sent over the servers, like this query every time you visit a site. The host pattern being uh, being the site you visit. This is against ARC's privacy policy, which clearly states ARC does not know which site you visit. Hell yeah. I mean, to be fair, they still may not know if they contain no privacy pattern. If they contain no logging or storage, and they're just checking for boosts on that specific page, I mean, I understand what they mean by ARC. They, 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 don't, uh, they don't know which sites you're visiting. I could see that being true in some sense. Oh, that's kind of a tricky one. Does that count as them knowing what site you're visiting? If they stored no information about it and you're just checking the database and they store no logs about this request other than creator ID searches up, because then it's like, is this actually going against the privacy policy? I'm not I'm not 100% sure on that one. But that one's not knowing and not keeping track of. Well, it's a client-side query against a database. It kind of feels like that bypasses a lot of that stuff. We store, but we don't look, so there's no, uh, so we do not know. <laughs> it's a good question. I don't know. Update. In light of these vulnerabilities, and let's see, and to introduce new features, Arc is switching off to Firebase. Let's see, switching off of Firebase. By the way, good job on that one. Additionally, Arc has published their own write-up addressing these issues. TLDR uh, version would be confirming they had fixed the issue. They are going to be adding features to disable boosts in the client, preventing this vulnerability from happening on uh, on people that do not use boosts. They are doing an audit of their current. I'm oh, sorry. They are doing an audit of their current Firebase ACL rules internally. They have established proper protocols for security issues. Additionally, from internal discussions with Arc, they are also fixing the mentioned privacy concerns uh, in 161.1 update, moving off Firebase for new features and products. They are doing an external security audit for their versions, are starting a bug bounty program for further vulnerabilities. Well, that's pretty nice. Okay, that's good. And by the way, so this is pretty cool right here. So here's an update from Eva. Uh, discover, uh, said discoverer of vulnerability. Update, Arc has increased my bounty from 2K to 20K. By the way, that, there we go. That feels pretty... That feels a little bit more proper, considering you just found the single-handedly the most comp. Because if that were to go out and someone was able to really thoroughly abuse it, it would have been like impossible to really regain that trust back for a lot of people. So this is good. We're figuring out the logistics of for me to get the money at the moment. Yeah, I could imagine that would be confusing. All right, Josh. Uh, thank you for being so patient and gracious with us. We made mistakes. We won't make them again. And I am grateful for how kind you've been throughout the process, our entire process. Uh, you have a job at the browser company if you ever want it. By the way, that's sweet. That's that's like that's like such a wholesome ending to all of this is that they give you 20K and uh, if you want a job. Are you going to take the job or do you, are you going to continue your security searching? They will make the mistake again. They probably, I mean, they're going to make mistakes again, but maybe not that ma ma mistake again, right? That's pretty cool. Have you? Ever, uh, how do you even tax this? What do you put this on reports as? It'll probably be a 1099 if this was like America to America. But my guess is since it's probably crossing country borders, it gets really confusing because Eva might need to have some sort of corporation assigned in her location. They have to have some sort of corporation created, in which makes sense. I, I would just accept Monero if I were you. <laughs> Hell yeah. Just get that Monero. Um, pretty great. Or stocks. Stocks are, again, you have the same problem as stocks as you do with cash. It's very, very confusing. BTC, why would you do BTC? BTC is clearly trackable. Come on, bro. You got to go the, uh, the whole other way around. Here's 20K in iTunes gift cards. Yeah. Here's 20K and $20 iTunes gift cards. Yeah, stonks. See, we need some stonks, baby. The name. This was not all that complicated. It sounds like all you have to do is have a basic understanding of this environment. And since you've already done this many times, the environment was easy for you to whip up a quick script, get everything running. Uh, by the way, you're using var and not let or const. Uh, I don't know if you know that, but that is in fact a problem. Okay, you know, modern, modern JavaScript in fact uses const if you're not changing it. Do you even have ESLint for this script? Some people put a fedora in their head, not on their head. <laughs> Again. 